Hello and welcome to another live stream. It's Monday again, can you believe it? And I'm going to be continuing to work on this snake Medusa girl. <laughs> this is working. Hey Mark, how's it going? Sound levels okay? Things sounding okay? Let's see. Ba -ba. Just want to share my stream here. There it is. Okay. We are good to go. <clears throat> Everybody's here. The gang's all here. How you guys doing? How's your Monday going so far? Brand new week. Hey, Neil. Hey, Brad. Okay, today we're going to try and see how far we can get on this. This is where we left it last week. Um, yeah, I really like this concept a lot. So let's, yeah, let's kind of see where we can go. Okay. Now I wanted to get some teeth going on in there. Hey Bruno, he cruised one. How's it going? It's pouring rain. Interesting. That's rare. All right. So I just wanted to get some teeth going on. Not so bright. In fact, I'm going to kind of get into the greens here a little bit. I think. There we go. And it's just not so in your face. Thanks, Neil. So I have a story about raining in LA <laughs> and uh, yeah, I was hanging out with Rob. Sometimes you'll see Rob pop in here, uh, 99 Roblums. I was hanging out with him at the Lightbox Expo. I had these old, older p shoes that I had worn the, uh, the texture off the bottom of the shoes, like the grip, and they turned into just boats. So since it, n it rarely rains in LA, what happens is all of the oil from everything just kind of floats on the surface and makes everything really slick. And I had, like I said, I had these like shoes with no tread on them at all. And they were just, they, and they kind of had this foam. Um, and what, when I would step, it would be like stepping onto ice and I couldn't walk with them on. <laughs> it was the worst thing. So I felt like an idiot. I couldn't walk. Hey, Charlie, I'm doing good. Thanks. No, I think I have her neck a little too far back. I'll fix that in a second. Okay. Hey, Mike, how you doing? Okay. I don't like the shape of those lips very much. I mean, I do, but not this bo <laughs> I don't know what's what's going on here. It's too lumpy. Hello, Cheryl. 
Were, Cheryl, was it you asking if I was going to be getting into the hair today? I think so. And I should, I should get to that point. That's the goal. Okay, that's better. Okay, and I could, I could fill these eyes with the eye, eye reflect material while we have it going here. Let's see. Or a toy, let's see. Like this toy plastic maybe. Um, you know, I'm gonna load that other one. Hold on a second. I don't have it. I haven't moved it over yet. Z startup, Z materials. It doesn't look like I'm doing anything because it's not showing my. There we go. I reflect. There it is. Yeah, maybe. Okay, let's try that, I guess. Yeah, sure. Uh, working on Rivers of America. I don't know what Rivers of America is. <laughs> Rained so much overnight it refilled it. Oh, geez. Okay, yes, this is Zebro Eye Reflect. Thanks, Neil. Um, you can go get that at Zebro Stuff there in uh, Gum at Gumroad. Okay, let's do, I'm going to put her, uh, her neck thing in, but before I do that, I want to fix her neck. Hey, Mike, how you doing? I haven't talked to you for a while. And I think I might try to um, subdivide, or uh, Z remesh her face. Do I want to do that? I don't I don't know. I'll leave it for now. Oh, Leonard, really? Oh, 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 oh. Okay, okay. I heard you guys do a lot of, uh, I didn't know you worked at Disneyland, but I heard they do a lot of maintenance in March. Is that true? I went once in, um, in November, right after Thanksgiving, right before Christmas, and they shut down like all the mountains, like Space Mountain, um, the Matterhorn, Splash Mountain, all of them, they were doing maintenance on them. So I couldn't go on all of them. Hey, Matt. Okay, so let's get this. Oop. Neck move just a little bit. Let's see my densities. Okay, I better fix that. It's a rotating schedule. Nice. Oh, Space Mountain too. They had that closed. <laughs> okay, so I have all different densities on here. Just want a light-ish density and just kind of clean this up. could also run a, if, if your machine is, ever starts to slow down when you're doing Sculptress, you can always decimate it. And that will keep most of this, well, it'll keep all your details, but really reduce. Here, I'll just show you. Because this is getting pretty dense in here. So let's duplicate the head, hide the first original head, and then if you go to, I have my ZBrush plugins docked over here. If you go to Decimation Master, you can pre-process current, which will essentially just um, calculate the surface. 
Hey, James. Have a chance to watch Turning Red? Yes, both of those. I've seen them both. They're great. Hope you well. I emailed you the other day when you sent out the line. Oh, nice. Very cool. Okay, so this is uh, this is calculated, and basically it doesn't really do anything until you uh, change either the percentage or the polygon count. So if I if I start to scroll this, and then hit decimate current, you can see it will decimate what I have. You kind of want to have this showing. It will get rid of your color. Um, actually, I think you can can you keep color. Keep UVs, keep use and keep poly paint. There we go. Poly paint weight. Okay, so let's try this again. <laughs> uh, decimate current. Uh, it doesn't want to keep it for some reason. Maybe I have to pre process it again with the poly paint selected. I'll try it again. Hey, David. Hey, James. Let's see. So it's pre-processing it again. And if you had UVs, you can click on keep UVs if you want. Okay, now let's try changing this up. Let's see, I'm gonna roll it down here, decimate current. There, it kept them. Okay, perfect. Okay, hey, what's up, Ica? All right, so you can see how it kept all of the information around my detailed areas. It does triangulate everything. And that's okay but um, so if you see the before and the after so currently this is sitting at 73,000 points where the original was 410,000 points so if your if your machine is ever starting to struggle or bog down you can always decimate it now this decimation is um, it's cached so you can change the number of polys or the percent of decimation as much as you want, or you can cl click these uh, these pre-calculated numbers. Like if I want seventy-five thousand, I can click on one of these, um, or you can just type in a custom number of points that you want, and basically it will it has everything in the cache, so you can keep testing different levels. Like if I hit one hundred fifty thousand, you can see what it does with one hundred fifty thousand, or if I go to thirty-five thousand, it's going to take it really low. Right, 75 I think is a good, good in between. Um, and it keeps all of your poly paint pretty well, right? So that's a really, really handy tool if you ever need to um, reduce some of the detail that's going on. And then you can, since, it's, since Sculptress Pro works with triangles, you can just continue to keep working with Sculptress Pro turned on. And you can edit that. And what I love about that is a lot of models will come to you decimated if you purchase models from, say, like Loot or something like that. If you're a Patreon of, of uh, companies that uh, sell or give away their STLs with a Patreon account. And you can, if you ever want to edit those, um, you can bring them into ZBrush, like import them as an OBJ or something like that, or as an STL. They usually give you the STL. You can import those and then you can continue you can edit those with sculptures pro okay so just so just know that and you can also um z remesh it and then subdivide it and project the details onto the new subdivided surface so that's another option you can do as well so again here's the before let's turn this one off see that the before is super dense this is after and then i can continue going on this Let's go to save this. Loved your Alan Alien. Oh, thank you. Really cool seeing you start at the end end game process there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was a lot of fun. So if you guys don't know what uh, Stolo was talking about, I just did four weeks of guest uh, guest attendance on the Stylus League with um, Mike and Bradley every Friday. That was a lot of fun. 
So if you want to check those out, just look up Stylus League on YouTube and you'll be able to find those, those four episodes. <laughs> Hi, Ka. <laughs> Very funny. Okay. So now we have just different densities to work with, which is cool. Now if I, it's just easier to now adjust this neck. I can blur the mask and it's blurring more even because my underlying topology is more even. There we go. I just didn't want her to be so, you know. <laughs> okay. There we go. Thanks, Neil. There's a link for you. My tablet has been messing up lately, makes doing any digital work impossible. Oh, that's a struggle. I'm sorry. It's not fun. Okay, so let's block this out. Actually, let's grab the green color. Yeah, kick it. See if that helps. <laughs> hey, Nil. Nil, not Neil, Nil. You know what? I'm going to try something with these arms, or these shoulders. And keep the delts kind of separate, but connected to body here and then make this more rib cage shaped <laughs> interesting shoulder shapes with the little bony landmark there Oops, let's see. Let's try that again. I really don't like overlapping things in the center just because it, it starts to mess things up. Speaking of Lionel Sculpt, do you know when the second part will be releasing on the workshop or is it? Yeah, it's TBA for the time being for sure. I wish, yeah, I wish I knew. It's just a matter of, I have too many things on my plate. <laughs> but I'm glad you liked it. Yeah, I wanna, I wanna get it finished for sure. Okay. Yeah, I did, if you guys wanna see um, where I ended up with that uh, Alan the alien. Okay, where is this? 
Where's my ZTLs? Oh, there we go. Different folder. Yeah, so this is my this is my Alan the Alien from the Stylus League. There's this part in the show, so it's on it's on Prime Video if you haven't watched it yet, and it started out as a comic book series. Um, so I have it right here. This is in, Invincible. He's from Invincible. He's from this from this comic, and uh, he's just one of the like world protector guys. He's I I like his design a lot. I like the colors. Even though he looks like Adam from He-Man, those colors. <laughs> so, um, anyway, he, yeah, I like I like how he turned out. A lot of fun. You can go check that out. Um, but I I make him from start to finish. Well, not start to finish, but from the I actually use the Lionel blockouts um, from his anatomy to start with. And if any of you guys are interested, I actually. That's part of the Lion-O um, bonus that I just barely added to the course. I'm adding stuff to the course all the time. And if you're wondering what course I'm talking about, it's uh, the 3D Character Workshop. I've ran it for almost four years now. And um, I just added a, an anatomy section where I build a, a blockout from z nothing to a finished blockout for uh, Lion-O from, you know, that old 80s cartoon. And he's kind of a medium build... Um, and I walk you through it and, and talk through the entire thing. So um, I started with that block outs with this. And then I just kind of uh, built the clothing and then posed him and then rendered him out. So yeah, that was a lot of fun. Hey, Lulu, how's it going? If you don't mind me calling you Lulu, I just think it's fun to say. <laughs> See, I, gosh dang. Well, I'll just put this in, no, goodness. So what I was gonna do is, um, I, I need to get these into separate poly groups, but um, if, you, if you guys didn't know this, the colors of poly groups are specifically set up on a chain of colors based on what you what in, what object you start the insert multi mesh at so for example if i were to draw a new shape on top of this purple it would be green whether it's this one or this one it will be green and then if i draw a new shape on top of the green it will be orange orange see that and then if i draw a new shape on this red it's going to be purple so purple a lot of people don't under, know that, know that it's a specific color chain. But, um, and sometimes I like that and sometimes I don't. Um, for this, for the shoulder example, um, I'm not, I, I want this these deltoids to be in a different poly group. So um, I can auto group them like this. But if I do that, then I, auto group does not work symmetrically. So then I would want to do a mirror and weld, but you can see that that uh, it's this is crossed in the in the center. So if I mirror and weld this, it's going to stitch these together in the center. I don't really want that. Um, so let me let me see if I can. Uh, maybe I'll have to move. Let's see here. Got to turn off symmetry. Move this away from symmetry. Delete this. <laughs> then do a mirror and weld. Drink. And then turn symmetry back on. There you go. <laughs> that's, that's, uh, can you tap alt to change the color? Uh, no. Um, that will change the color of of a of a single face i don't think it'll change the color of a of a group like you can you can do that with z modeler hover over a face um i guess i could do polygroup all let's try this uh polygroup polygroup all 
click this and then hit alt. I guess you could do it that way, but I don't know if I could, if that works, that, that would be in the same uh, poly group over here. So maybe I would have to do object. I don't know if the object is the thing. Anyway, yeah, maybe poly group order. Yeah, you could probably, I could probably have done that with, with the Z modeler that way. I usually hide the objects I want to group mask. Yeah, so I could have done that hollow set, but um, the the shoulder and the breast was they they were overlapped as well, so I couldn't mask them separately. Does that make sense? Polygroup Island, thanks. That's what I was looking for. Polygroup Island. That probably would have worked. That would have been a faster way. <laughs> okay. All right. What am I doing? What am I doing? Getting lost in polygrouping world. Oh. It's getting a little too low. I'm going to hit apply. And again, I might have to separate. Lift and separate. <laughs> oh gosh, I'm horrible. Oh good, okay. So I want a Z remesh, but I don't want the Z remesh to, again, uh, stitch together in the center. So I applied these and then we're gonna Z remesh at a, let's see, maybe a two? Totally did not know the color chain thing when creating things. With, oh, I want to keep the groups. Keep groups. Try it again. Okay, that's better. Maybe even a bit heavy, but that's okay. Okay. You really have to try to keep uh, things separate down the center. <laughs> yeah, cosmetic surgeon for sure. Okay, um, let's get these arms in there. So I'm gonna make these arms Okay. I can see they're way too far out. I need to get a t-shirt with this mantra on, but I always tell my students, um, add react. So basically you add a new shape, <coughs> and then you react to it. So I added the arms, and now I'm like, okay, those are bad. I need to fix them. Sh you know, the shoulders are bad. Hey Ruth, how you doing? Hey, Wilberth. Hey, Lewis. Hope I'm saying your name right. Okay, I like this from the front, but from the top, it's weird.
Yeah, I'm going to have to kind of fix this uh, transition through here. I found a, <laughs> I want to say I found a new band that I like to share with you guys, but it's not really a band, it's a singer. Because this singer is in like seven or eight diff. Oh, sorry, Ruth, I was talking about Luis or Lewis. Lewis or Luis? I'm not sure. But I'm glad I said your name right, L Ruth. <laughs> Space Cookie. So fun to say. Okay, let's put a, just for fun, let's put a collarbone in there. Um, anyway, the, the name of the singer is I gotta remember his name. Hold on. His name is Dan, but I'm trying to remember his last name. Uh, Dan Abadan. So Dan A V I D. It's like Dan twice, but Dan Abadan. So. He sings in like so many different bands on, and my favorite one, my favorite song of his is called Starlight Brigade by Twerp, T-W-R-P. And here, I just got to show you because it reminds me of, they have a, an awesome music video that goes along with it that's an animated, uh, that kind of reminds me of like old Robotech and old uh, like Thundercats and stuff like that. So, um, you guys should check it out here let me hide this so i don't get dinged for anyway check this out it's so good i want to i want i'd love to model her this main character it's really good anyway um so i've been listening listening to um he sings in sky hill and ninja sex party is another <laughs> name of the band and twerp and I think just solo on his own, and it's he's in so many. Very good, Dan Abadan. And he's also in Game Grumps. So my yeah, my son kind of uh, showed me his stuff, and I've just kind of fallen in love with it. Really nice. Turn off this fix and go back. Yeah, from Game Grumps. Yeah, yep. <laughs> yeah, collarbones are overrated. Sorry, I just got to concentrate here for a second. Let's 
it's funny because the first song I just barely typed his name into my music app and the first thing that came up was him singing a seal song kiss kiss from a rose and uh seal is one of my favorite artists of all time and and then Dan is singing one of his his songs and he's great Okay, I'm gonna kind of pose her already. I know this stuff is all gonna to stick together when I when I merge it, but I I want these shoulders to transition nicely. Let's see what I'm trying to do here. Yeah. <laughs> Animal band names are the best. Like seal. <laughs> the seal tune is from this Batman soundtrack? I think so. Seal is the, the basically the the I, I wouldn't say the band, but the the music that I love to just belt out when I'm driving down the road. <laughs> you look in the rearview mirror, see somebody just singing along with whatever they're listening to. It's most likely Seal for me. Okay. Okay, let's get her some clothes on, shall we? That. Okay. And we sing in Black Hole Sun. I think I ran across his covers. Wash the way. Split this off. Let me know if you guys have any questions about this, what I'm doing. Game Grumps is set up by a guy who used to do a lot of animation back in the day. Me and Dan are best friends. They invite people along to chat and play games. You should totally send them an email to see what happens. Yeah, I like I said, that's one of my one of my son's favorite shows. Um, yeah, it'd be fun to do some collaboration with him. Hey, 
you, Sammy. Welcome to the stream. <laughs> yeah, no, no blades. Yeah, I was just pulling them out subtly. I don't want them. So when I when I teach my students, I basically say if you're going to block out a character with s different pieces of of uh, things like this, um, you only use as many as you want to use to help you move on to the next step. And um, I like color bones because they can kind of uh, help me with my placement. So so can scapula, but um in the back i i like it to be more subtle and not so not so sharp so usually i'll just sculpt those in later but um yeah like something like just barely enough to be there otherwise i would like go full on and sculpt the traps in there and everything you know or like block the traps out hey tattoon how's it going Okay, let's see. It's gonna be fun to connect. Let's try. Get a ring, two rings in there, let's see. And I'm probably, I wanna make, I, I make all my stuff these days for 3D printing. So I, I try and not um, make it so there's air underneath of, uh, underneath things, so. Let's see, I'll show you what I'm talking about here. Just save this. I have a question for you today. While, while working, many people even ask me questions from different area. Why don't you feel irritated? How do you stay so cool? Like, what do you mean? I think I can answer your question. Hey, Insane Pixel, how's it going? Cool name. I think you've, I think you've been on my stream before, but. So what do you, while working, what do you mean by different areas? Like different areas of expertise? Like if people are like asking me about like environments or realistic characters and stuff like that versus stylized, is that what you're saying? Hey Yankee, how's it going? Um, so I, I, I just answer casually. I either say, you know, that's that's not my area of expertise, or, you know, since I'm streaming on the Pixelogic channel, a lot of people assume that I work for uh, Maxon slash Pixelogic, which I don't. I'm just a volunteer here, um, and so I, you know, when people start asking about, um you know, purchasing ZBrush or asking about other programs that, you know, this is the official uh, ZBrush channel. So when people start asking about other programs, that's when I get, I don't get irritated. I just get like, I don't know. I have to answer those questions over and over again. Like, hey, this is, this is uh, the official ZBrush channel. So I'm not gonna talk about those other programs as much, you know, or at all. <laughs> I don't know if that answers your question or not. <laughs> okay, so for this ring, let's do split and unmasked points. 
Now, there's also, I have this primitive brush that you can get. I give it away for free over on my website, 3dcharacterworkshop.com, if you want to use this. But there's also primitives underneath the gizmo. So if you uh, make the gizmo visible, and I only have one object in this scene, um, because it's going to replace whatever object that I have visible. And if you click on this gear, you can see all these primitive objects right here. Okay, so if I click on this ring, it's going to make a ring and it's going to replace the cylinder. So the cylinder will disappear. What, so just be careful. If you're gonna add a primitive, it's not adding, it's replacing. So just be, just, just be aware of that. Okay, so now I can come in here and um, re I like to reduce the coverages here. Um, so if you hover over these, these uh, cones, you'll see it says different things. So like the length subdivisions, I wanna turn that down to I think, what is it, 18 or, I'm trying to remember what the magic number is. Sometimes it's hard to land on the number that you want. There we go. Because I like to have, yeah, it's not 18. Because I like to have a, an, a line down here and up top and then left and right. And you can see it's split left and right. So let's try 16. Yeah, that'll do it. See, boom, 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 boom. Okay. And then, um, so this is, I turned dynamic subdivisions, turn off so you can see it. Hey, Carlos, how are you? Thanks for coming to the stream, hanging out. Okay, I think that's good. All right, 16. Um, length divide. Okay, and then this is eight. That's eight works good too. Then it's like one edge up here, one edge down here, and one on the front and the back, and then it splits. So that's a good, that's a good number. And then when you're all done, you just click on here and go back to Gizmo 3D. And now you can move it around. Now he's doing a cover of uh, U2. Still haven't found what I'm looking for. That's a good song. Okay. Maybe I'll lean it up a little bit like this. Yeah. Okay. And this is gold, but I, you know, a lot of people will go to the material and fill it with a gold material, which is okay, but I like to color it with a color and just leave it skin shade color. Hey, Y Maple, thank you. So it's not gonna look perfect. Oh, nice. So usually I'll fill it with a color and then put a material on it sometimes, maybe, but sometimes not. Because usually I'll just color it just to indicate what it's made of. And then I, when I export this out into my rendering program, I will add materials and change it up there. So it's not gonna look how I want it to look here. So I can't install GoZ on Zin Cinema 4D. Uh, again, yeah, Lewis, just like I said, I'm not, I don't work for ZBrush or Maxon. I, I, I only, I have a limited knowledge for things. So um, one of the things I have limited knowledge on is GoZ. I don't use it too much. So I would reach out to, uh, I, I, don't, I don't know what their support is now. But just go to, um, the ZBrush website and find support and send them an email about it. Does my course cover rigging? It does not. Okay. So with the, with the, the cloth here, um, I think what I'm gonna do is just stretch out a sphere.
Yeah, sorry, I couldn't answer that for you, Lewis. Uh, stretch out. And the reason I'm doing it this way is just because it's it's difficult to match like a perfect perfect spherical shape. And it's easier just to kind of take something and drag it around. Don't overthink things, basically, is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> Um, are you, have you been always working on stylized characters only in your lifetime? I mean, before joining Disney? Yes. I've always been a huge fan of stylized characters. I haven't, I, I don't think, I've only done like one realistic character. Maybe two. Uh, when we enter the Valley of the Set, can you give us pointers? to help us find and exit the valley. Um, yeah, I find frustration to be quite a thing when I wander into the valley. It's almost like a dinosaur in the valley is <laughs> waiting to Yeah, so, uh, and if you're wondering, Valley of the Suck comes from, uh, it's, a, it's a term Ryan Kingsland came up with. Um, and basically, it's when your model is just not working for you very well, and it's, Almost all of my models go through this phase. And basically you shorten it based on your experience. So that's the, I, I, I hate to say it, but that's the answer is experience. And even then I still have models that it just, like the other, the other day I was streaming on this live stream um, and I was doing a, a, a bust with, um, with a, neck, a neckerchief thing on her head. And she just looked old. I couldn't get past her looking old. So, and she's still there. I need to, I need to work on her some more. But there's some that are just, just difficult. Do you have the video with the first part of this project? It's just last, it's, it should be on the, the ZBrush Live uh, YouTube channel. Neil, could you find that and post that? I don't know. Nice. <laughs> I found a good a uh, good channel with Dan Avidan. He's singing all these all these uh, covers. Okay, let's see. I'm going to auto group this because um, I need to get on this side, and this one's in the way. So I'm going to delete one and then mirror it later. Yeah, another way to get out of the valley is just practice, 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 and have someone there, a mentor, to um, help you see what's wrong and help you get through it. Or a group of like-minded students, like the ones in my, in my Discord and in my, on my forum for my course. The world. Oh, so there's the link to last week's video, you guys, that we're looking at, looking for that. Thank you, Neil. So just don't walk up to strangers with a picture of my project and go, what's wrong with this? Um, okay, so actually in Same Pixel, you should. Uh, not necessarily strangers, but um, 
sometimes, how does the saying go? You're too close to the forest to see the trees. So you, what that means is um, you can show it to anybody, whether they're an artist or not. And they're going to be like, well, I like it, but you know, maybe this area is, is, is weird to me. They might not have the answer you're looking for, but everybody kind of has an, you know, they have, they have eyes and they have a, a gut feeling about things and they might be able to point you to the area that isn't working. So, um, yeah, that's, that's, that's a thing that you can use your, you can ask relatives. Okay. I'm going to Z remesh this. Maybe a, yeah, let's go a one here. Maybe less. Hey, Corinne, how are you? I always share your work. I can always honestly say it makes you improve so much faster. Yep. Yeah, if you're just sitting by yourself wondering what's wrong with the thing, it's going to be difficult. It's much easier to bounce it off of people, whether they're uh, professional or not. Um, they do, I do have a playlist on Pixelogic that's just my videos. <laughs> I'm like, are you, are you, are you trying to, <laughs> are you trying to get a reaction out of me? <laughs> I do. One of my students. Oh, they just haven't got to it yet. I'm sure. Just be patient. They'll add it. And then, and, and. Oh, you got a job today? That's great. Congrats. I'm going to pull this back more. Thanks for letting me know. That's great. <laughs> are you started one year ago? That's awesome. Are you, are you a student of mine or just from watching video, YouTube videos? YouTube, great. That's awesome. You wish she had more of an expression on her face. You, are you talking about in the concept or my version? Yeah, she'll look a lot better when I turn her neck and her head tilted a little bit and her eyes to one side. Um, right now I'm just building her, so going to be a while and I'm taking a little more time on her than I usually do just because I want it to work out <laughs> yeah how have you been Corinne it's been a while turn on perspective and just check things here. Oh gosh. What 
working full, full time and freelance. That's awesome. Um, I have been doing really well. Thank you. Um, I am, uh, well, I can't announce what I'm doing yet. <laughs> I wish I could. I want to, I want to make sure that I have clearance to talk about it. ZBrush support hasn't changed. You still start a conversation with support. There you go. Thanks, Leonard. Okay. Let's see here. Is it still bugging me here? Career growth as a freelancer? Uh what do you what do you mean? What are you what are you looking for? Like any general advice? No, not really other than, you know, you just, I always say these companies or these projects, they're just looking for people that can uh, do what they need you to do. And so your portfolio is basically there to show them that you can do what they need you to do. So if you can show people that you can do what they need you to do, then you have a much better chance of getting that freelance job or that full-time job or whatever it, it is, you know? Quick synth. Have you worked as a lead artist before? Uh, yeah, I was the department head at Disney Interactive for a while. Um, if so, what are some of the things that an artist can do to help them? for that kind of position in the future uh exactly what i just said so it doesn't matter if it's freelance doesn't matter if it's full-time your goal as an artist is to sh is is an artist trying to get work is to show the company that you can do the work that they need you to do so the best thing is to research whatever company you're wanting to get work or to work at or get work from and uh tailor your portfolio to show them similar work that they're needing you to do, right? And if they're needing you to do like collectibles, toys, or anything like that, then you need to have that in your portfolio to show them that you can do that stuff. And if you're, if they do game characters, you need to show them that you can do game characters too. You need to show them that you can do retopology, UVs, all that kind of stuff. Will there be a four year anniversary party? <laughs> I wish. <laughs> I have, I have students all over the world. I don't know how that would work. I guess I could do a virtual one. Yeah, people always wonder what they should put in their portfolios, right? And for me, it's like, well, you need to put in there whatever you need to to show those studios that you want to do the work. And you need to tailor it towards work that you want to do, not necessarily the work that they want, you know, that all companies want you to do. So for example, if you want to work for a company like, um, let's see, like Rare, for example, that makes uh, Sea of Thieves or something like that, or Ratchet and Clank, you know, that kind of stuff, that's the kind of stuff you need to have in your portfolio. You need to kind of show those studios that, hey, I can do this kind of work, see, check it out. And they'll go, yeah, you can do this work, so let's do an interview, that kind of a thing. Okay, let's see. Yeah, it is It is really as simple as that. This doesn't get more, don't make it too complex. What would you recommend to get started on type of work? Uh, what do you mean, Donna? Like, um, well, okay, first of all, I would, I would just try sculpting and see if you didn't like it. If you've never sculpted before, um, you know, just get some free uh, software like, like ZBrush Core Mini, 
that's free. You can grab it, download it, play with it, see if you like to do it. And if you do, then you start investing in yourself and in software. So uh, that means you start, maybe you get, you, you graduate up to ZBrush Core. Um, and then you uh, eventually, you can either pay for ZBrush subscription or you can buy the full thing. It depends on your level of investment. And then you want to invest in some courses to teach you how to do this stuff. And you can either learn from YouTube or like you're doing now, watching live streams, stuff like that. Or um, you can buy larger courses like the one I offer. It's uh, 3dcharacterworkshop.com. And I take you through start to finish, like from your first day with ZBrush all the way to advanced. So there's a lot of my students here watching, like Corinne and Neil and all those guys. So you want to ask them how the course is. Um, yeah, and that's, a, that's actually really good advice that Comic Legend just said, Comics Legend, and um, which is don't put work in your portfolio, portfolio that you don't want to do. Like, don't put a bridge in your portfolio, like a fully 3D modeled bridge that you maybe did in school or something, if you don't want to do that for work, right? If you do, then put it in there, but put more stuff like that in there if you're going to want to do props and environmental things. But if you want to do stylized characters, don't put a bridge in your portfolio. Does that make sense? In same pixel, I think it turned out pretty good. I still need to finish the render on it, but I should be posting it soon. Hey, Slug, how you doing, man? I'm going to do just a couple of these in symmetry and then I'll turn symmetry off to break it up. Yeah, this is a cloth brush. This is my cloth brush that I give away if you go get my brushes over on 3D Character Workshop. What the heck is going on here? Ah, okay, there's a pole. So see this pole right there? It's kind of fighting with me. <laughs> Trying to get a nice... Yeah, see how it's just, it's not giving me what I want. Hmm. You know what? That is not a fun thing. Okay, so I'm going to redo, redo this because I don't want to fight that. Hey, attentive. Yeah, it's honestly, I'm going to do two different processes on it. So for the for her entire head of all of these tubes, I'm just gonna use stretched out spheres. Um, but for the actual snakes themselves, I'm probably gonna do uh, like I demonstrated last week and just uh, do um, the snakes with uh, bend modifier on them. Yeah, I'm not gonna take these to Sculptress. That's, I, I wanna keep them low. So let's see. I want to um, just to go from here and just Z remesh them, but I'm going to give them a flatter surface to end with rather than a taper. 
like this. Tubes. Okay, let's try just using the same and just see what we get. See, there goes the poles. Yay, done. Much better. You don't want to fight with poles. Actually, I want to... Um, Um, in same pixel, I could do that. It's kind of it's it's more about your uh, your time spent, right? If like the time commitment it would take to make a, a insert multi mesh per brush out of a snake, I I guess I could, but I think I'd struggle with that more. Have you finished Elden Ring? 125 hours in and it just doesn't end. I my my son just finished it today, but I have not yet. Okay, there we go. That's better. No. There we go. Yeah, this is great. Much better. Elden Ring is a game. It's 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 uh, technically called a Souls game, like Dark Souls, by FromSoft, and it just came out a couple weeks ago. And I've been playing it, and I'm not I'm not quiet about it. <laughs> I don't know why anybody would ever do you you totally can just go run run to the bosses and go fight them really quick but I don't know I feel like that's a waste of time and money <laughs> it's like enjoy the enjoy the trip you know that game is so big and so much stuff going on it's like just slow down take your time Yeah, speedrunners. I mean, good for them, but I just don't understand it. That's too high up. Yeah, 19 minutes I was still fighting all those dudes at the front gate. <laughs> Oh, nice, Quicks. That's cool. I totally, totally lucked out on the PS5. Like, right before all of the... Um, all the scalpers, you know? There was, a, there was a guy who was worried he wouldn't get one, so he ordered two of them in our... just down the street here from me. And he just posted it on Facebook one day. And since I had purchased something from him before, he, it came up on my feed first. <laughs> And I'm like, you have a PS5. I'm going to come down and buy it right now. And he was selling it for retail. So I didn't get uh, scalped. I was able to buy it retail, which was great. Okay, that's better. Better, better. Yeah, I, I count myself extremely lucky with that one. <laughs> But I'm playing Elden Ring on my PC because all of my other friends are playing it on PC, so that's the only way I can really play with them. <sighs> Clown the effects. One of, one of the course over two years, I finally saved up and was hesitating to buy it and got the course last year. I think it was right before the price increased, but you haven't started it. Why not? <laughs> I don't understand. I do not understand. Oh, 
Okay. Yeah, that's good advice. Start start with the bust course. That's a nice, short, sweet thing that you can just do without a major time commitment. Oh, thanks, Teldon. I have one more uh, interview in the in the cooker that's coming out. I'm excited about that one. So I do, uh, I do pro interviews where I interview people in the industry and where in different locations in the industry, like some they're in toys, some, you know, in collectibles, there are some that are in film, some that are in, um, like other instructors and yeah, really, really fun to talk to other people in the industries. Okay. Let's try this again. Hey, Lone, how you doing? Okay, no poles to fight against. Base uh, is already Z remeasured. No, it's still, it's a decimated Sculptress Pro face. Thanks Dukes. I'll be moving on to the hair shortly. Just wanted to get this okay first. Okay. All right, let's block out this hair here. Save it first. Um, where can you find the interviews? I, um, I, they're in my course. Yeah, so if you wanna see what this looks like, I've decimated it, it looks like this. Okay, let's block out of the hair. I'll grab this green color. Whoop. <laughs> here, let's do this. Gonna fill these cloth here first. Goodness. What did I do? I had the face selected, not, there we go. <laughs> Ooh, geez, there we go. All right. You work with very soft surfaces for the final operations so as not to lose detail. Um, kind of, yeah. Can I know your art station? Um, yeah, it's Shane Olson. So this is, this is my art station right here. I need more stuff. I need to put more stuff in here. I have so many more characters. I probably have four times this much that I need to get in here. <laughs> this is the character that I, that I teach during my course. So anyway, there you go. Okay, let's, uh, 
now we can grab this color and block out brought any of your recent character models into game engine like uh not recent um i'm kind of moving away from game characters to be honest i like 3d printing a lot more let's change this background if you want to know how to change the background of yours of your uh canvas here um basically what you do is you change the color so you can even select this color um, and you can lighten it. So I'm gonna drag this up. I don't want it bright white, but I wanna be able to see the silhouette a little bit better. Uh, you just go to document and click the word back. It will change the background to be lighter. It's a little harder to see your text, but let's go maybe a little darker than this. There we go, that's better. Um, did you learn how to sculpt the character in your course trying to get really, really get my anatomy right and create more characters? I teach anatomy. I, I teach uh, stylized anatomy in my course. So if you want to learn, I do cover that stuff. Um, do you have some images of your art from back in the day so we can see that we don't need to have superpowers? Um, I don't know that I have any uh, uh, like right quick to access. They're all on old hard drives, but I do need to dig it up. I do have some old ones. I've been doing this for a long time. I've been doing this for, oh goodness, since 1998. So that's how far back I'd have to go. <laughs> and really quickly here, let me just move this stuff around. Oh, you bought the frog? Nice. It's still available. I don't know. I should take it down. It's, I mean, the information is still good, but it's getting, it's getting outdated. All right, Corinne. Well, thanks for hanging out. Thanks so much. Corinne is one of my students that has uh, really, really taken. And it's because you, you get out of the course what you put into it. And she really put into it. So, um, yeah, she ended up working for uh, Disney Collectibles for a time, and now she's got a full-time job in games. And yeah, she's been, she really took it and ran with it. Okay, let's see. Yeah, there you go. You can see Corinne's art station there. Thanks, Neil. Can you tell me how to make a low-res beard and big tash? I, I assume you mean, means mustache. Um, just like you would make anything else, honestly. Just like I'm doing this hair, you kind of just block it out. To make it low poly, you need to retopologize it, typically.
Ryan, so if I keep sculpting, I will somewhat get better? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Like if you put in the time, that's the whole idea. Uh, I, I really um, equate it to learning a, an instrument, right? So um, if you're trying to learn how to play guitar, for example, when you first pick up a guitar, you're not gonna be very good. But the more you practice and the more, you know, the, the better you'll get and you'll just start playing better and better. And that's the same goes with, with sculpting. You'll just, just by the virtue of practicing, you'll get better. Please tell me your education level when you started sculpting. Um, well, when I started sculpting, I did have a lot of art background. So... Um, because I was a polygon modeler for the first 15 years of my career. So I was pushing points, you know, like pushing um, vertices around. And digital sculpting didn't come until later on when I started using ZBrush. So I was already uh, pretty, I, I was already in my career, you know, because of the polygon modeling. So I just transitioned to sculpting. Once you have... There are two sides to this. Um, there's the technical side and the art side. And the art side will always stay with you no matter what medium you use. So you can take your sculpting skills and you can sculpt with snow or sand or another program or anything and your art skills will stay, right? Once you learn the art skills, you stay. So, um, so Noah, just go to 3dcharacterworkshop.com and I don't, I don't like to say the price on here just in case it changes and this, this video will stick around. And so if I say a price here and it changes, then people will get upset with me. So um, yeah, you can just go, go check it out there. I can show you a little bit behind the scenes. Because that's one thing that I don't do a good enough job at is showing you exactly what you get in the course. But if you want to see it, I'll, I'll quickly show you. So after you log into the course, it looks like this. Um, you'll get like the 3D Character Workshop 2.0. There's communities, there's a forum, and there is a Discord channel. So the forum looks like this. So you can see the quality of work coming out of, you know, all the students. Um, and somebody mentioned you don't like to post your stuff as a beginner. Well, this is a safe place to post your stuff as a beginner. Um, you're not going to get ridiculed or it's not like posting out on the internet for everybody to see. So, um, yeah, there's, there's a whole bunch of students in there. Really fun. And um, this is 1.0. And then I have bonuses like this, uh, like full character walkthroughs, like this character called Sirloin. And I just added this new one, Lion-O, right here. Um, this is where the pro interviews are. I have this early beginner walkthrough. This is like your first day in ZBrush right here. Um, and if you click into the workshop, this is what it looks like. It has all of this information here. Like I show you how to block out a cartoon character in your first week. Uh, your second week is talking about stylized anatomy. Um, I'll show you a little bit of this one. So I talk about all the pieces and parts and yeah. So, um, and this is the mini bus challenge. I was, somebody was talking about like, go do this mini bus challenge. It's just doing a head from start to finish with hair and a hat and a, you know, a bow and all that kind of stuff. So, um, and we talk about stylized hair and costuming and props. And there's more to come. I'm going to be going over some other stuff too. So, um, yeah, it's, it's a lot of fun. So there you go. <laughs> hey, thanks, Brad. Okay. Oh, thanks, Mike. So for this, for the first bit, I basically, I'm just going to just take spheres and stretch them out. So I'm going to split them off.
Any reason for not wearing a smudge guard? Are you talking about like a glove? Those little fingerless gloves? Um, the reason why is because, and it's it's funny because uh, Ashley A cubed she she said this too, but those gloves like choke off my circulation for some reason, and my hand turns cold, and I my hand just doesn't streak and smudge enough for me to to feel like I need to use one of them, um, so I just don't. I yeah I don't use those. And I, I don't say that you shouldn't use those. I'm just saying I don't. <laughs> and that's, that's the reason is because of lack of circulation when I try to use one. I have, I have several. I just don't use them. I'm afraid of getting scratches on from what there's your hand shouldn't scratch your Cintiq I don't know if anything should scratch your Cintiq it would be your your pen right yeah I don't I've had this one this Cintiq for a long time and it hasn't scratched at all and it doesn't get all goopy or anything weird like that it's it's good Okay, so I can turn on transparent and see what's going on with this. Hey Bobbles, that's true. Yeah, take your ring off. I don't I don't wear a ring on my right hand, and if you're left-handed, if you have a ring. Um but my ring finger, yeah, I guess it gets close enough that it could scratch. You know, <laughs> one thing about these Cintiq pens or the Wacom tablet pens, I don't think I've ever worn out one of these nibs. I don't think I ever have in my entire career. I can't think of when I have. I don't push hard enough. Make this thinner. What part is that? What part is what? I'm just putting in these tubes, these snake bodies for her hair is what I'm working on. Kind of looks hot dogish, but. All right, let's, um, I'm gonna Z remesh this super low, as low as I can do it. There we go. Z remesher is a beautiful thing. Now, once I have one in here, I can just duplicate it. By holding down control and just dragging it and it will duplicate. I don't want to make these too even because then it will look non-organic. I want to keep the chaos. Let's pull this back a little bit. <laughs> Try moisturizing. This 
just kind of reminds me of the um, I did the the pirate girl. I don't know if you can see her. No, you can't. Um. Anyway, she kind of has hair like this a little bit. And a lot of this is going to be covered up by these several strands going across from the front down and back. I'm just doing the underlying snakes for now. Hot dogs, whatever you want to call them. Besides Zebra Summit, do you know of any other cons that focus on 3D printing? I don't, actually. I don't know if there's 3D printing conventions. I would imagine there are, but I don't know if they would cover, like, the character stuff, you know, if that's what you're in interested in. I think they would be more, uh, like, part-related. Like, engineering stuff, you know? There's a small, oh, did you go to GDC? Or did you just watch it? I've been to GDC a couple times when, when that was a thing where you could go. I guess it's back now when everybody got COVID. Here's a ZBrush. I was wondering when you merge shapes, the geometry polygons, you don't see where the shapes are connected. Um. So Doug, I, you can go back and watch some of my older uh, live streams and you can see when I uh, combine the shapes together and then I, what I do with that geometry once it's combined. You do see, um, you do see them connected and where the connection is, it kind of looks like a stitch, like it's been sewn together. And it gets rid of all the interior geometry that you don't need anymore. And then you can go back over the top of it and... Um, you know, clean it up and stuff, so. Let's see here. I don't think I've ever heard of inscription. Yeah, this is very, very close to um, like real clay sculpting. I mean, if I were to do this in real clay, I would essentially just take a piece of clay and roll it up like a snake and lay it on the surface, right? It's not, yeah, don't, don't overthink these things. It's not like, well, how am I going to, how am I going to do this? Nine times out of 10, you just, I, I kind of think about it like that. Well, well, how would I do this if it was real clay, you know? And I always look for the simplest way possible. I don't want to get lost in the tech of what it, you know, like the bells and whistles and tricks and things. The best way is to just do it. <laughs> I hate to say that, but it's true. You just do it. Um, a friend of mine, Ryan Peterson, he's one of the best sculptors on the planet, in my opinion. And um, he's not that big of a ZBrush user but the stuff he can pull off with it he works for sideshow he does those big giant uh life-size busts of um of 
of DC characters like Batman and Hulk and well, actually both characters, both Marvel and DC and, and uh, like Deadpool and stuff like that. And they, he does it out of real clay and I go over to his studio and it just blows my mind every single time I see it. But he also does ZBrush stuff and he doesn't know like tricks. He just goes in there and he takes all the stuff that he knows from real sculpting and just applies it. And it's insane what he can do with ZBrush. Okay. Sorry, I just want to do something really quick. Do you also sculpt traditional? Um, just very, very little. I I tend to like my undo button a little too much. <laughs> Oh man, okay, good. <laughs> Plato, yep, yeah, Plato. And sand and snow and <laughs> was art station given grief today i don't know that i'm going to be getting to the actual snake hairs today hopefully 15 more minutes yeah that'd be nice leonard right <laughs> So it's not working? That sucks. So every time you um, duplicate an object by holding down control and dragging, it will leave the new object in the same poly group as the object that you're duplicating it from. So what you have to do is invert the mask, hit control W and put it in a new poly group. So if you see me doing that, that's what I'm doing. So for example, see this is kind of this, this burnt umber color. If I hold down control and drag to make a new one, see it puts it in the same group. So I just hold down control, tap on the background, hit control W, and it puts it in a new uh, poly group. And now I can hold down control and tap on that new poly group. And now I can go finish going about editing it. <laughs> BR. I knew somebody was going to say something. Plasticine. Huh? It's all good. It's usually me. When I'm not in mixed company, it's usually me making those jokes for my kids. <laughs> Well, so, so none of these are masked right now. Um, basically, you have to show your gizmo like so. 
and then you control click on the one you want to duplicate. So for example, I want to duplicate this one. Um, see, it masks everything out. And now I can control drag it and then duplicate it. And we're good to go. Invert it, control W, there you go. Oh, nice McBubbles. <laughs> Okay, invert, control W, there we go. And you can also change the polygroup color if you hold control, tap on an object, and just hit control W, whoops, sorry, invert the mask, it, it basically changes whatever's masked. Um, control W, there you go. Now it's not so brownish. <laughs> so McBobbles, just so you know, 1.5 has been redistributed, redistributed, what was I saying? To between 1.0 and 2.0. I'm I'm phasing out 1.5 because it's kind of this midway, halfway thing. So all of the older stuff with the kind of newer lessons that pertain to it are in 1.0. And then all of the weekly challenges are in 2.0. So it's been it's been pushed. So you don't have to uh go through 1.5 anymore. Are you using a line pivot to surface just a while ago? I sometimes can't define if I prefer one way or the other. Um, so a line to, so it's not really a, a, a button or something you hit. Just by default, if you have the gizmo showing and you hold alt and tap on the surface, it's just going to align the gizmo to the normal of that surface, no matter what. That's the that's just the default behavior of the gizmo. So yes, that's what I use all the time. Hey, what's that? What's going on, Ashley? Uh, hey, we were just talking about you. Well, specifically, I was talking about you because somebody had asked about fingerless gloves and using them on the surface of your Cintiq. And I said, Ashley and I, we're not fans. You're the, you're the only other person that I know of that is, uh, feels the same way, is uh, the, those fingerless gloves, they, they choke off my circulation and make my hand cold when I try to use it. Is, that's the same for you, right? Isn't that what you said? Yeah, the weird restriction, for sure. It's just weird. <laughs> I'm a nudist. I'm a hand nudist. <laughs> oh, man. Naked fingers. That's probably a website. Don't go there. <laughs> How you been, Ashley? I don't know why it is, but I always seem to be somewhere doing something when you live stream. And so I never, I'm never able to stop by and say hello. And it, it makes me feel so guilty. But thanks for dropping by. You're the best. So Ashley is another uh, live streamer here on ZBrush Live, goes live every Wednesday, makes some awesome stuff. Time zones, but I want, I want to, I want to come hang out. I've caught you a few times. Hey, Soner. Uh, love to see you again. Hope you're great. I have a question for you. What do you think ZBrush needs to make your life work easy? Um, honestly, I don't know what else uh, the, the the good team at ZBrush could do to ZBrush. It's I feel like I feel like it has everything I need. I can't really think of anything that I would want that it doesn't already have. Metric time zone. Um, there are a few things that I would like to see, uh, tweaked a little bit, but the super minor. 
Like I wish they would take the retopo just a little bit further and the UVs just a little bit further, but that's like, uh, that's just quality of life stuff, you know? I would love, yes, Brad, I would love for them to add smooth shading. I would love that. A sugar-free soda dispenser implemented into ZBrush. <laughs> A new transpose? No, no. I'm fine with I'm fine with the gizmo and how it all works. Time to close those gaps, people. You you made Kaladin? I don't know what Kaladin is. What are you talking about? What are you talking about, Willis? Um, sorry for this question asked before, but do you have tips for sculpting hair? Well, I'm sculpting hair right now, so I'd say stick around. Um, I, I can give you a, a, a tip, though, that I always give my students, and that is um, think about where the hair is originating from and where it's going. And then block it out just like you would block out anything, any other p part of the character, work large to small. So block out the large pieces first. So if you were around, I blocked out the, the main big section first, and now I'm doing the medium size things, and then I'll do the small things. So um, basically right now I'm doing the, uh, the underlying base in just stretched out spheres. And then I'll do the snakes. I'll lay those on top um, and focus on the silhouette and stuff like that. But yeah. Sorry, I meant a line cursor to surface during brush strokes. Oh, um, I honestly, I don't really, I don't mess with that stuff. I just kind of use what's the default. This is looking too, too, uh, too superficial and even. Your eyes are perfect spheres, or are they more of an oval? They are perfect spheres. I also don't chat much in Twitch. I apparently replied to my own message. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. First time caller, long time listener. Let's see. One maxims. Yeah, that, that remains to be seen. I don't know about that. But they will have access to more help, that's for sure. And that's that excites me. All right, well, let's see, it's almost time to be done. I'm gonna do, um, should I use this technique for the live ZBrush competition last year? Hey, Amber, how you doing? Can you model characters in pose? Do you prefer T-pose and transpose or start modeling with a final pose? I always take my T-pose to as far as I possibly can, just so I can take advantage of, uh, so, of symmetry. And then I take it to pose after that and then make adjustments. It's very rare that I will work in pose from the start. It's kind of a, that's kind of a painful thing to do.
Do you render your beauty shots using ZBrush or KeyShot? Um, KeyShot mainly. I take it out of ZBrush. Unless I'm doing a cartoon render, um, like Dan Eater, like he has figured out how to do cartoon rendering in ZBrush. If you've seen his latest uh, uh, Final Fantasy Girl that he did, it's, yeah, he's mastered cartoon shading in ZBrush. Just check that out if you haven't yet. Yep, key shot's great with the key shot bridge. Makes it nice. Let's see, what am I doing here? Needs more volume. Snake volume. <laughs> Who's your favorite artist? Um, I have a lot. And I have a lot of favorite artists on the 2D side and the 3D side. I always miss the beginning. Do you keep correct topology while sculpting things? No. Um, you mean this era I'm looking at right now? Most likely. <laughs> Let's add some weight down here. Some more weight. So some of my favorite artists, um, some of my favorite 2D artists, I love Johannes Helgeson's stuff. I've modeled a few things of his. Um, I love Shane Glines. He's amazing. Love, love, love his stuff. Um, I love Luigi Lucarelli. I don't know if that's how you pronounce his name, but Lucarelli, Lucarelli. Love his stuff. Oh, goodness, what's going on here? I'm going to have to fix that later. <laughs> I love Joshua Black's stuff. As far as 3D artists, um, Sorry, I'm gonna embarrass you, Ashley, but Ashley, I love her stuff. I love I love her stylized stuff and her monsters too. But um, I love Jim, Jimmy Levinsky, um, Renal Galan. He does amazing stuff. He actually does uh, a lot of models of Johannes Helgeson's work. Um, I like Has from Has Toys, um, and Lena, Lena Lazar, his uh, partner. Um, Dylan Ekrin. Um, man, there's a ton. There's a ton. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah, Maria. Maria's on a different level. So she, she is like fine artistry level. And I'm just like down here kicking out stylized sculpts. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Her stuff is on a completely different level. Same with, uh, same with James. Oh, what's James' last name? He does like these war sculpts. They're so incredible. <laughs> yeah, just too too many to list. <laughs> Love them all. Okay. Let's. Uh... Just kind of want to bring one down. I'm just trying to decide how I want to do this if I want to. Because I, I did a test run where I made a snake before and then, um, it, but it was stretching out the head so much that I didn't really, I wasn't a fan of it. So I might just do these one at a time, just make stretch spears. What's the most detailed scope you've ever done? Uh, probably the, the, the cowboy riding the, the dinosaur. It's probably the most detail I've done. Okay, let's do a stretched out sphere, just one, and just kind of wrap it around so you guys can see what I do with that.
And I have one in the works that will be more detailed than that. If I can ever get to it, my goodness. Oh, <laughs> uh, I need to reach out to Dan and see how he did that. That cartoon render, it's so, the, the character is so good, so good. Um, I do have to give a shout out too to Dynamau 3D. I love the anatomy that he can pull off. And he does like fan art of all these different favorite characters like uh, uh, Samus from Metroid and things like that. Just just really, really nice. Now, Dynamau, he, he, does, he does a lot more. He, t he gets it into pose quicker than I usually do, and which is fascinating to me because of how he... He, he usually will get, he has a block out that he starts with every single time. And then, um, and then he will pose that block. He'll try a whole bunch of different poses just with the block out. And then when he finds one, he'll kind of do a, a, a costuming pass and then he'll put the costume into the pose. And I, I, yeah, it's, he's one of my favorites most recently. And I think Densai, is that a thing? Densai is a company and they have some sculptors and artists working for them. And I love them as a whole, just their, their look and feel as a whole is really nice. And of course, um, I love Guz, Guz's stuff. And then, um, my favorite, oh my gosh. I'm just, I'm just thinking of all these. There's so many, so many, so many. <laughs> Yeah, the hair is awesome. Hair is, I love his hair. It's hard to get that light feeling with Geo hair. Yes. Just so you guys all know who I'm talking about with Dan. And somebody had the nerve to make this into an NFT. Oh, like, and it wasn't Dan. He had nothing to do with it. Somebody just ripped off his art, made it into an NFT, and now they're, they're banking off of it. So, okay, I guess I was already showing. Um, this is what we're talking about. This, look at this. Look at this hair. So good. I, I don't wonder how he got these highlights. They, they kind of look hand-painted, but I'm not sure. That's so nice. What is an NFT? Um, I, I don't want to get into it. It's called non-fungible -fung token, but just, <laughs> I don't know if you're playing with me. But uh, yeah. Anyway, awesome. This is incredible. And this is uh, rendered in ZBrush. Cartoon rendered in ZBrush. Check that out. Jeez Louise, Dan. That's insane. Yeah, he's on a different level for sure. So even this, even this render is incredible. Look how soft. And it's just got these really nice cartoon lines around it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. Anyway, I need to I need to pick his brain a little bit more. A lot more. Okay. Oop. Nonsense for tools. <laughs> yeah, that's what it means. <laughs> oh goodness. Uh it just makes me it, I don't know. It makes me grumpy because it makes me not want to post any of my stuff because somebody's going to make an NFT out of it, you know? Try to make money off of it. Sure. Oh, it's already two o'clock. Oh, I gotta, I gotta finish this up. But essentially all I'm going to do is, um, I'm going to put a, a modifier on this hair and then just kind of edit it and pose it and then I'll make the snake head after the fact and probably stick it on there later and duplicate the head the the snake head all over the place so then I can make one and then just stitch it stitch it on the end but if you watched last uh, my last episode you saw me uh, play with that at the I think it was the end of last episode saw me play with the ed the modifier it's just underneath this gear called bend curve just put that on here and then you can increase the amount of curve 
curved dots. And then you essentially just drag these dots around. But I'm gonna Z remesh it first so I have better geometry to, to move around. Um, yeah, so that's essentially how I'm gonna do all of these loose snake hairs. And then I'll finally, after that, go through and put all the jewelry on, like all these rings everywhere. Um, but I'll make it so it's 3D printable. And uh, yeah, that's what I'll do. So for now, I think I'm done for the day. But thank you everyone for hanging out with me. Thanks for dropping by, Ash. Always good to see you. Okay, so she's getting there. I need to give her better eyeballs. Yeah. Getting there, getting there. <laughs> anyway, everybody, uh, thanks again for hanging out. Again, I do offer an online class if you want to learn how to scope characters like this. It's called the 3D Character Workshop. Um, yeah, we're coming up on four years of the workshop running. So um, it's, always, it's always fun to add more and more students. So you're welcome to go check it out. So I also give away this user interface, these brushes, and my ruler file for free. Same website, 3dcharacterworkshop.com. You can get them all there. And uh, they're the exact same brushes you see here. It's exactly the same thing that I've been using for all of my live streams. So um, thanks everybody for hanging out with me. We had a really good turnout, 223 people watching right now. That's incredible. So thank you for spending your time with me today. I really, really appreciate it. I know you can be doing uh, hundreds of other, other things other than watching me today. So I really appreciate it. Thanks everybody. Thank you, Neil. Thanks everybody. Take care. Have a wonderful week and we'll see you next Monday. All right. Cheers.